Hi everyone, it's Katrina, Alta Brisa Ruins. There are 20 archaeological sites within the Mexican city of Merida, and around the city there are an estimated 50 more. Merida was a major hub for Maya activity centuries ago, even as far back as 2,300 years. It should come as no surprise that a mysterious ruin was discovered behind a pair of luxury condominiums in the Alta Brisa neighborhood. Just behind its tall walls and shining windows is a hidden world, because this neighborhood happens to be at the edge of the jungle. As of right now, the site here has no official designation. Local archaeologists are aware of it, but there haven't been any excavations or investigations done. It's just an obscure pile of rock in the jungle outside of town, and yet it could be extremely important. There are the ruins of temples, there's something that looks like an enormous pyramid with trees growing out of it, and it's all been lost since the 3rd century BC. There are so many remains hidden underneath dense vegetation, being swallowed by nature, that it was almost definitely a city. Much of it might even be hidden underneath the luxury condominiums. Locals have taken pictures of stairways, esplanades, and at least a dozen considerable structures. Nobody knows what the place is, but all evidence points to a major city similar to Chichen Itza or Tikal. Mystery City in Sumatra Alfred Isaac Middleton was an explorer obsessed with finding the ancient jungle city of Dalitu in Sumatra. At least, this is what the rumors say. The truth is that Alfred is one of history's greatest mysteries. He was supposedly a Victorian-era Indiana Jones type, who explored Africa, the Amazon, and the depths of the Southeast Asian jungles. He lived in the late 1800s and allegedly vanished during an expedition. The issue with Middleton and the lost city of Dalitu is that we have no proof either truly existed. There are strange photographs that have been circling online for years, showing a man in an explorer's hat standing in front of mysterious ruins. The ruins are deep in the jungle and appear to be crafted in the shape of ancient spaceships. The photos show bizarre monuments that look exactly like modern space shuttles, and some that look like flying saucers built into the sides of mountains. These photos also show groups of tribal-like people gathered around the mountains. And yet these photos have never been certified as real, and neither has Alfred. According to vague sources, Alfred was on a mission to discover the lost city when he was taken prisoner by a group of men in the jungle. Then he was killed in captivity, and his body was lost forever. Australian Warplane Willie Flynn discovered the ruins of a mysterious warplane from World War II on a recent jungle expedition. Willie lives in Papua New Guinea and heard of the warplane from a pig hunter who had come across it while tracking some animals. Willie knows the hills around East New Britain fairly well, and so he went to search for the wreckage himself. This was no easy mission. Willie, who was only 15 when he made the discovery, had to cross jungle rivers, hike through dense bush, and had to negotiate with the chief of the local village just to be allowed through the area. But when he finally did climb up the side of a forested mountain, cutting his way through the jungle with a machete, he found the metal debris he was looking for. Willie discovered parts of the airplane scattered across the hillside, pieces of a propeller, some guns from World War II, and pieces of a door. It took a lot of digging, but Willie soon uncovered the bulk of the Australian warplane. He also found parts of a leather watch and even a pilot's vest that may have been worn by the man flying the aircraft 80 years ago. The wrecked plane is believed to have contained four Australian soldiers who ran into trouble and crashed in the woods and were never found. This is one of over 600 crashed airplanes that landed in the jungles of Papua New Guinea during the war. Many of them have never been recovered. Shibatun In eastern Yucatan, there is a Maya paradise called Shibatun. It's deep in the jungle near Oshwats Natural Park and was once a thriving city. It was founded around the year 300 BC and then abandoned between 800 and 1000 AD. There is very little left to show that a city ever stood here. Most of the buildings have been disintegrated into piles of rubble. And yet that hasn't stopped archaeologists from identifying ceremonial temples, Maya palaces, and a pyramid almost 100 feet tall. They even found a kind of ancient stadium used for a traditional Maya ball game. 
All of this stuff is currently hiding in the swampy jungle, surrounded by deep cenotes and dangerous lagoons. Shu Batun translates into ancient Maya as the place where water is collected. This city was almost certainly a paradise in the Maya world, a harmonious community tucked away in the jungle with ample fresh water and bountiful soil. However, its discovery has been a disaster. The city was first found in the 1990s, then forgotten because nobody wanted to put in the effort of excavating. The only ones who did put in the effort were the looters. When the city was recently rediscovered, archaeologists found all the treasure had already been stolen by enthusiastic thieves who pillaged everything they could find. Carmen Varela Torresilla, a Spanish archaeologist investigating the site, says she and her team discovered new structures and the remains of some ceramics. But all the good stuff has already been collected and is most likely on the black market. As for this site in prehistory, researchers still don't know much. It was definitely a megalithic city and may have been influenced by the better-known Maya metropolis called Isamal. I want to give a big shout out to Daryl Boshears and Brad Long. Thanks so much for watching and supporting Origins Explained. If you are new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and join the family. The tallest tree in the jungle. Scientists have just found the tallest tree in the Amazon rainforest. It looms high in the sky like a natural giant over the rest of the jungle. It was spotted in northern Brazil, inside the Iratapuru River Nature Reserve. But just how tall is the tallest tree in the jungle, really? Researchers say it stands about as tall as a 25-story building. It's been measured at approximately 290 feet high and 32.5 feet in diameter. Forest engineer Diego Armando Silva, who is the one behind the organization of the expedition, said the tree was one of the most beautiful things he had ever seen. He called it divine and something truly miraculous. It was Diego who first came across satellite images of the tree and knew he needed to get a team out in the jungle to find it. But the satellite images didn't measure up to the real thing. It was incredible, standing strong in the middle of a forest where humans had never set foot before. This was in a truly remote part of the jungle, only accessible by bushwhacking and suffering quite a few spider bites. Believe it or not, the team couldn't even reach the tree the first time they tried. The expedition was a disaster, and the team had to turn back. They'd received too many bug bites, and the threat of dying from disease was real. And they ran out of supplies. The final expedition took over 13 days through the mountainous jungle just to reach the greatest tree of all trees. Diego believes it's 400 to 600 years old. Would you go through all that to visit the tree in real life? Let me know in the comments below. Mysterious Fangs In the remote jungle of northern Peru, a mysterious monolith was recently uncovered. The monolith is riddled with circular patterns, swirls, and fangs. The patterns found on the monument, identified thanks to scientists using 3D scans, are so abstract researchers had a hard time describing them in words. However, one of the patterns was very clear. Two fangs were engraved in the solid stone and they were likely meant to be representations of a feline deity. This monolith was extremely difficult to find. Researchers had to hike, ride horses, and fight their way through the jungle. They climbed from 6,000 feet to 13,000 feet above sea level to a remote village inhabited by people who very rarely see outsiders. And only there did they come across the ancient monolith. The monolith was carved by ancient hands long before the Inca civilization ever existed. It was likely made around 200 BC, before writing in Peru even existed. Because of the lack of written history, nobody knows the name of the mysterious feline deity. Researchers only know of its existence because of other fangs carved in other monuments found in the remote jungle. This was a mysterious god or goddess worshipped by some of the earliest human beings to ever live in the Peruvian forest. Another interesting thing is that the Inca likely discovered the stone as well. We know the Inca believed the region to be sacred and built some bathhouses nearby. It's possible that for the Inca, the mysterious monument was just as big of a mystery to them as it is to us. Jungle Puppies Ancient ruins and mysterious stone monoliths are hardly the only thing being discovered in the jungle these days. For the first time in history, jungle puppies have been captured on film in Peru. According to National Geographic, 
A recent effort to catalog animals in the rainforests of South America resulted in rare footage of Amazonian short-eared dogs. The Amazonian dogs are some of the most elusive inhabitants of the jungle. To put them into perspective, researchers know more about jaguars than they do about these ghost canines. They are incredibly smart, avoid scientists like the plague, and were only recently captured on camera thanks to traps set up in the bush. Daniel Cauceiro, a professional ecologist, had to trek through miles of dense foliage and set up hundreds of expensive cameras just to capture a brief glimpse of the ghost dogs. It was worth it, because one of the cameras picked up a mother and her puppies. It recorded the mother dog going back and forth from her den and carrying her puppies in her mouth. It was amazing, because such footage has never been captured before. Nobody has ever seen a jungle dog caring for her puppies in the wild. These canines are so elusive, we don't even know how many exist. We don't know if they are on the edge of extinction, and we don't know how they survive in the wild jungle. The Amazon Pyramids In 1976, one of NASA's satellites orbiting the Earth photographed something strange in southeast Peru. The photograph was taken above the Madre de Dios region of the Amazon jungle. What the image showed was a set of formations that look like pyramids. There appeared to be at least eight pyramids visible through the jungle foliage, although the image was blurry and the structures couldn't be 100% confirmed. They soon became known as the Pyramids of Paratuari. The photograph soon leaked. Explorers and archaeologists got a hold of it, and the hunt began. Speculation started to circulate that the formations were pyramids left in the jungle by a lost ancient civilization thousands of years ago. Some even connected the pyramids to the mysterious lost city of Paititi, an ancient Inca metropolis located east of the Andes. Gregory Dayermengian, an explorer out of Boston, went on various expeditions between 1984 and 2011 in search of mysterious jungle ruins. He documented the Inca ruins of Mameria, found the petroglyphs of Pucharo, and documented the pyramids of Paratuari. Unfortunately, he was never able to confirm the existence of pyramids. He did reach the mysterious formations captured in the NASA satellite photo, but they turned out to be natural formations. They looked like uniform buildings in the picture, but wound up being natural landforms kind of shaped like pyramids. Maybe next step, hopefully LIDAR. Sak Tsi After decades of searching, researchers in Mexico believe they have finally found the lost Maya city of Sak Tsi. The mysterious city reached a peak population of only about 1,000 in the year 750 AD. This was tiny compared to most major Maya cities, and yet it was quite a bit older than some of the bigger settlements, carbon dated back to 750 BC. The site was identified thanks to a graduate student from the University of Pennsylvania. The student happened to learn of a limestone slab unearthed by a cattle rancher. The slab was decorated with a Maya calendar and other mysterious glyphs, and that led to the discovery of the city. So far, archaeologists have uncovered more stone slabs, ancient cooking tools, and the remains of a woman from 2,500 years ago. They found stone walls around the city center and a panel inscribed with the origin story of the city. The panel is decorated with images of war, floods, and a magical water serpent. It's not clear what Sak Tsi's role was in the ancient Maya kingdom. Considering their small size, they couldn't have been all that powerful. However, researchers do say they likely had strong connections with the larger settlements up until their mysterious demise in the 9th century. Settlement in the Ramgat Jungle A mysterious settlement from the 13th century has been discovered in the jungles of Ramgat, India. Archaeologists were surveying the area when they came across the shocking remains of a massive settlement spanning an area of over 20 acres. Researchers found a rampart measuring over 700 feet made of solid stone. They also found a ruined gate, burnt bricks, and gigantic stone slabs. Many of these stone slabs were found with strange symbols and designs on them. Some were even carved with what appear to be weapons, from bows and arrows to tridents. It's unclear who lived in the settlement or what happened to it. It was discovered deep in a largely unpopulated forest in India, a place beyond the reach of most people. Researchers also found a footpath made of brick from the Stone Age, suggesting ancient humans lived in the region for thousands of years. 
Relics in the Lost City The great lost city of Palenque was discovered by the Spanish in 1567. The local Maya called the city Otolum, meaning a land with strong houses. The Spanish translated this to Palenque, which means fortification in Spanish. At the time of its discovery, the Maya had already abandoned this place for centuries. It was already a ruin, in about the same state as it is today. And all these years later, researchers at the National Institute of Anthropology and History in Mexico have discovered something extremely unique. They have found a representation of the corn god hiding in these jungle ruins. The ruins of the city have only been about 10% explored over the past 500 years. We know about the big buildings, like the Temple of Inscriptions and the mysterious burial chamber of the Red Queen. But the truth is that there are way more, over 1,400 structures already documented, spanning 1,800 hectares of land. It was recently, while the researchers were looking at the palace where the Red Queen was buried, that they found a hidden corridor. Inside the corridor was the severed stucco head of the corn god lying in a small pond. Researchers say it was probably placed on the floor of the pond and then sealed inside of a stucco enclosure as a way to simulate the god entering the underworld, probably as an attempt to make it rain. The Ancient Path Researchers have just begun revealing one of the largest ancient pathways in the world, and it's hiding in the jungles of South America. This trail is extremely old, going back over 1,000 years, and actually connects the Pacific Ocean to the Atlantic. It's about 2,500 miles long, and was originally carved by the indigenous people who called the jungle home. The name of this secret ancient path is the Camino de Peabiru, once used by the native Guarani people in Brazil as a spiritual road that supposedly led to a mythical paradise. When European colonizers arrived on the continent, they used the same path to bring riches from one side of South America to the other. Most of the original paths have already disappeared, either totally overgrown by the jungle or transformed into modern highways. It was only in the past few years the researchers started really focusing on uncovering what was once the biggest road in the world. From what we know, thanks to historical records, it was the Portuguese sailor Alexo Garcia who first used the path to walk from southern Brazil to the Andes Mountains in Peru. He was shipwrecked in 1516, was taken in by the Guarani people, and they showed him the trail which they said led to a mysterious empire in the mountains, rich with gold and silver. This mysterious empire ended up being the Inca, and after walking roughly 2,000 miles, Garcia became the first European to ever behold the Inca. This was over a decade before the Spanish conquistadors arrived. Lost Cities of Bolivia About two decades ago, researchers from the German Archaeological Institute began excavations on some mysterious mounds near the small village of Casarabe in Bolivia. This is right at the fringe of the Amazon jungle on a savanna plain which floods every few months out of the year. It didn't strike the researchers as a smart place to build a permanent settlement, and yet they discovered traces of habitation prior to the 16th century. They also found causeways and canals leading for miles across the savanna, seemingly to nowhere. All these years later, researchers have returned to learn more about the Casarabe culture. They believe this culture flourished here in Bolivia between 500 and 1400 AD. The mounds, which were originally excavated, were actually eroded pyramids. They were basically stumps of melted stone and mud that had once been huge pyramid structures. To get to the bottom of just how big this society was, researchers used light detection and ranging technology to survey the terrain. This involved a laser scanner attached to a helicopter, sending laser pulses across the ground. This method revealed two massive sites that were once great cities. These lost cities at the fringe of the jungle were between 147 and 315 hectares and could have held thousands and thousands of people. We have no idea what happened to this mysterious society. They had clearly built cities that could rival those of the Inca or the Maya, and yet every last trace, other than the marks they've left on the ground, is gone. The Secret Pyramid of Samoa Hidden deep in the thick and tangled jungle of Samoa, a rocky footpath recently led archaeologists to one of the most mysterious secrets in the South Pacific. Researchers found 80 ancient star mounds, platforms built in the shapes of many pointed stars. 
These enormous platforms were abandoned about 300 years ago, and they are baffling experts. Researchers don't know exactly what they were used for, why they were abandoned, or really anything else about them. The few details scientists do know are that these star mounds are some of the oldest and largest structures anywhere in the region of Polynesia. They were probably pyramids with flat tops, molded to have eight points in mimicry of the stars above, and they were built starting around the year 1000. The rest is a total mystery. Archaeologists have suggested these star-shaped pyramids could have been used for pigeon snaring competitions, public meetings, or religious ceremonies. They could even be burial chambers, and there could be bodies hiding deep underneath. The mounds were most certainly built by a pre-colonial society that flourished before Europeans arrived in 1722. It also shows that the Samoan population was likely far larger than anyone believed. It's now looking like colonialism wiped out around 80 to 90 percent of the people in Samoa, destroying their culture and heritage with them. Lost Indian Settlement The ancient remains of a settlement from the 13th century were recently discovered hiding in a jungle in India, in Arunachal Pradesh. Researchers found a massive rampart made from stone blocks over 742 feet long, along with the eroded stone of a huge gateway. Even more interesting is that they found symbols that appear to be bows, arrows, and tridents inscribed on the remains of the rampart. They found the remains of broken stone pillars, burnt bricks once used in the creation of some great fortress, and the scant vestiges of huge stone staircases that must have once led to tall temples or other buildings. This entire region is known as the land of Papumpare, and it's a mountainous place in the Himalayas covered in lush forest deep river valleys, and sprawling plateaus where humans rarely visit. Clearly, this mountainous jungle region was once home to a major culture around the time that Genghis Khan was rampaging across Russia. Researchers even found a path made from bricks that came from the Stone Age 5,000 years ago. Nobody knows who these people were. They have no name, and their mountain cities have been reduced to crumbling rock fragments. Researchers like Pura Koji, who was involved in all of the excavations here, says they need more time and more information before they can get to the bottom of this strange mystery. So I want to give a big shout out to Relaxing Music by Daddy Loki and Lori Carter. Thanks so much for watching and supporting Origins Explained. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and join the family. Lost Maya City in the Yucatan Archaeologists in Mexico have discovered yet another lost city of the Maya, this time during construction work at an industrial park. The work was going down near the capital of the Yucatan in Merida, and the new city is estimated to be at least 1,400 years old. Researchers have named it Xol, and they say it flourished from between 600 to 900, during one of the most epic periods in Maya history. This was a time when the Maya city-states were vying for power, with a complicated network of enemies and alliances making up the kingdom. Then, in the 9th century, the Maya world fragmented from within, and the entire civilization slowly collapsed. This led to the abandonment of many cities, the end of all the royal dynasties, and mass migration to the north. It was during this time when Xiol was left deserted. Researchers first identified the lost city in 2015, and have been excavating ever since. They've uncovered the remains of massive palaces, huge plazas where citizens gathered in celebration, stone altars that may have been used in sacrifices, and even a cenote, where the Maya dumped ritual offerings to their gods. 38 funerary deposits have also been uncovered, revealing exceptional information about the inhabitants and their burial customs. The funerary deposits contained burial goods like jewelry and flint tools, showing how the Maya here cared greatly about sending off their dead with lots of supplies. The abundance of marine animal bones shows that the people probably ate a hearty diet of fish. Lost Mountain Temple Deep in the jungle of Thailand, an ancient stone temple has been discovered. The temple was found amidst the ruins of a large settlement that dates back to around the 6th century BC. Historians are calling it the City of Mountains. The researchers first heard a rumor about a system of ruins hiding in the jungle in 2017, but only recently managed to cut their way through the dense foliage, climb halfway up a mountain, and discover the remains. And when I say remains, I mean it! There was almost nothing left when the researchers arrived except tons of rock. 
Most people wouldn't even have realized they were standing in the remains of what had been a city 2,500 years ago. History tells us that the region has been a major production hub of jewelry, wood, and tin since 500 BC. This settlement was probably part of a larger network of communities spread across the Gulf of Siam that traded with kingdoms much farther away. In fact, the settlement may have even grown to be a massive city-state with its own rulers by the 13th century. What this means is that the scattered rocks, the very few building blocks still left to document, once belonged to one of the oldest cities in Thailand. The temple discovered was probably a sanctuary built around the year 775, dedicated to the Buddha. There is still a lot more exploring to do, since only about 5% of the total site has been excavated. Centuries left alone has allowed the jungle to totally swallow the place. The Great Medieval Cities of the Khmer Archaeologists in Cambodia have come across medieval cities hiding in the jungle. These cities were found near the famous temple complex of Angkor Wat, which was arguably the greatest jungle city ever built by human hands. Because of how dense and impassable the jungle here is, researchers had to rely on new technology to identify the structures. They used laser scans to reveal cities dating back as far as 1,400 years ago, completely overgrown by the tropical forest floor. Some of these ancient cities are nearly the size of the modern capital of Phnom Penh. Researchers scanned about 734 square miles of jungle and identified multiple populated cities, which when put together make up the largest empire anywhere on the planet in the 12th century. The Khmer Empire truly was the biggest, greatest, and most fearsome of them all, even if they weren't quite as advanced as many other societies at the time. Their cities were large and very populated. The biggest mystery is trying to figure out where all the people went. Until recently, it was believed that the Thais invaded Cambodia, pushed the Khmer out of Angkor Wat, and everyone fled south. Considering these cities survived long after Angkor, that theory may not be true. We don't know what happened 800 years ago in this hot, sweltering jungle. Borneo Jungle Paintings There is a mysterious cave in Borneo, hiding in the jungle of Southeast Asia, which hides a seemingly miraculous secret. There is a painting inside this cave, which dates back 40,000 years. There are a lot of paintings in the cave, with artwork showing species of wild cattle, humans doing some kind of ritualistic dance, and much more. It's been quite the interesting discovery for archaeologists, since it proves that cave art didn't begin in Europe as was previously believed. Instead, some of the oldest artists in the world may have lived in the Indonesian province of Borneo. Not much else was discovered inside the cave system. Nobody lived here, but instead climbed to the forested peaks of small mountain-like rocks for the sole purpose of creating art. They basically had to mountain climb up sheer rock to reach the mouth of the cave without any kind of equipment, just so that they could draw hand stencils and paintings of animals. And they may have been doing it years before anyone in Europe began making their own cave paintings. Kalak Mool just a few miles from the border of Guatemala, in one of the biggest tropical forests anywhere in the Americas, there is a ruin called Calakmul. It's one of the most mysterious Maya ruins in Mexico today, hidden inside of a biosphere reserve which is protected by the government. There are almost no tourists down here. Nobody is allowed to pillage the jungle of its resources, and so the ruins have remained relatively untouched. This city dates back much earlier than most of the more famous Maya ruins. Many of the biggest abandoned cities in Mexico were built sometime around 600 AD and then abandoned between 900 and 1000 AD. But Calakmul was built over a millennium earlier, around 550 BC. It did reach its height at around the same time as the other Maya cities, between 250 and 900, and then was totally empty by 1000. It was around the year 636 that Kalakmul had its most challenging period. The city had already developed an extensive political network, only to be defeated by the Maya rulers at Tikal. The city continued to thrive, but the political upheaval was major. At its peak, the population of Kalakmul was about 1.5 million, and the final mysterious fact about the city is that even though it was abandoned by the year 1000, it wasn't totally forgotten. From between 1000 and 1500 AD, Kalakmul was a pilgrimage site. 
Before the Spanish came, nearby villagers would bring offerings and dump them inside the unmaintained temples and pyramids to appease the gods. The Namibian Flying Snake In Africa, dragons are a little bit different than in other places around the world. There is no better example of this than the Namibian Flying Snake, a legendary serpent that soars through the skies. As a mythological creature, the Namibian snake is gargantuan, yellow, brown, and can grow to be about 25 feet long. It can camouflage perfectly with its surroundings, and it has a bioluminescent crest, huge dragon horns, and an inflatable neck. Although its body is that of a monstrous serpent, it flies with leathery, bat-like wings made of thin flesh. Somehow, this creature only gets weirder from here. The Namibian flying snake supposedly makes bizarre roaring noises as it flies. It also stinks like tar, is covered in scales, and isn't that great at flying. The only way it can get itself into the air is by flinging its body off a cliff. Interestingly, nobody is really sure where the myth of the flying snake came from. Some experts believe it comes from ancient legends of African dragons, while other sources claim its origins are much more recent. There was an alleged sighting of a strange creature in 1942 by a man named Michael Esterhues. As Michael was tending to his flock of sheep near Keetmanshoop, he saw the beast throw itself down a hill and take to the skies. Another sighting came in the 1950s, also by a farmer in Namibia. Then, in 1978, a French farmer in the region saw the same thing, only he reported seeing its bright green eyes and smelling the stench of tar coming off it. Some experts have tried to explain these sightings scientifically. They say the farmers may have witnessed an unidentified species of flying snake and over-exaggerated the details of their encounters. The Teju Jaguar The Guarani people have been living in South America, primarily in Paraguay, for thousands of years. The Guarani are so ancient that their myths and legends were never written down, and they didn't even have their own written language until a few years ago. For that reason, every story, every god, and every horrifying creature has been passed down by word of mouth, like some type of historical telephone game. When stories are told by different speakers, they tend to change slightly. Imagine that happening over generations and generations. Things would definitely start to get a little blurred. Most scholars believe whatever the original myths of the Guarani once were, they've changed significantly. Here's what we know about the creation myth from these ancient people's stories. Tupa, the supreme god of all life and creation, was helped by the moon goddess Arasi to build the oceans, forests, and all the animals on the planet. They also worked together to place the stars in their spots in the sky. The last thing Tupa created was human beings. He supposedly crafted clay statues of men and women and breathed life into them. In typical ancient myth fashion, he created monsters as well. One of the most frightening monsters of all was Teju Jagua, the son of an evil spirit named Tao. In the Guarani myths, Tao was kind of like the Christian devil. He was said to be a personification of evil itself, a real satanic figure. For Tao's evil deeds, he was cursed that his descendants would be deformed and monstrous. When his lover Karana gave birth to Teju Jagua, Tao's first son, the boy was a hideous monstrosity. He was a giant lizard with seven dog heads, along with eyes that could shoot fire. Even though he was so fearsome, his giant heads made it difficult to move. However, he was still an impossible foe, because nobody could get near him as his eyes continuously shot out flames. The Huldufolk In a 2007 study done by the University of Iceland, 62% of Icelanders were found to believe in the existence of elves. More than half the population of Iceland still believes in creatures called Huldufolk, or the Hidden People. These creatures are akin to mythical elves for everyone outside Iceland, small humanoid beings with pointy ears. However, to Icelanders, they are very real, interdimensional monsters that hide in the countryside. They believe the Huldufolk have been living alongside humans ever since people first landed in Iceland. They also believe the Huldufolk do the same daily activities as they do. They apparently fish, farm, and raise families. But if so many people believe in them, 
Why has nobody ever been able to officially document them? This is because the hidden people live within a parallel world. They only make themselves visible to those who believe in them and otherwise remain unseen. A visitor in Iceland could have an elf walking right beside them on the road, and they would never even know it. They even have a general agreement not to throw stones, because you might accidentally hit an invisible elf. Iceland is one of the last bastions for the belief in the magical, and many of the natives have openly claimed to have met the hidden people and even befriended them. The Hulda folk also aren't that terrifying, and are more like anti-goblins. Instead of eating children and being mischievous, the Hulda folk tend to help out where they can. The scary thing is the possibility that there is a mirror world right beside our own, filled with tiny pointy-eared people. The Maero The Maero from New Zealand is similar to that of Bigfoot in North America or the Yeti from the Himalayan mountains. Its roots are deep in Maori folklore and legend, and it may have even been the original inspiration for the terrifying Sasquatch. This is thought to be the case because the tales of the Maero almost certainly predate those of any hairy monster found in North America. But just what does this New Zealand creature look like? Similar to Bigfoot, it's larger and stronger than the average human and is covered in a thick layer of black fur. The Maero is also known for its violent tendencies. It's said to wield a stone club and beats the occasional lost traveler over the head with it. The creature also supposedly has extremely long fingernails like meat hooks, which it uses to carve apart unlucky humans and any other animal that gets in its way. There is an interesting theory that states the Maero were once very real animals. In the Maori legends, their ancient ancestors are said to have always been at war with these hairy humanoids. Some stories say these groups even cross-bred with one another, creating horrifying abominations of nature. Scientists think the Maero could have been a primitive hominin, possibly one that didn't go extinct until the modern age. This creature may have been more primate than prehistoric humans, and the Maori of New Zealand may have been terrified of it. There is also a possibility that the Maori hunted one of humanity's last primitive ancestors to extinction. The Baby Yaga in Slavic folklore, the Baba Yaga is the absolute worst thing you could encounter. Some fables have her acting as a forest spirit, but in most of them she's a horrible witch and an awful sorceress who preys on children when they wander too deep in the woods. The stories of Baba Yaga are so numerous that it's impossible to track down the original one. Her legacy comes from many different Eastern European sources, as she was a staple figure among different cultural groups. Depending on who tells the story, Baba Yaga is a totally different character. However, in most cases, the creature's characteristics and principles are the same. The Baba Yaga is obsessed with politeness, manners, and purity of spirit. She can be a guide for a hero on their journey as long as they are incorruptible, respectful, and sincere. On the other hand, if a hero asks the wrong question or behaves inappropriately, they will be tormented by the Baba Yaga and her magical powers. The most popular version of the Baba Yaga is the one from Russia. Russian folklore has her flying through the air in a large stone mortar and using the pestle to steer. She lives out in the woods in a log cabin that moves from place to place on dancing chicken legs. The fence surrounding her house is supposedly made from human bones, and to seek her help in a quest is a major gamble. The Baba Yaga is just as likely to help someone in need as she is to kidnap and eat them. She is wildly unpredictable and difficult to track since her house can move on its own. Kamasats Out of all the deities and monsters in Maya folklore, Kamasots is one of the most frightening. One of the best representations of Kamasots can be found in the museum beside the Templo Mayor in downtown Mexico City. There is a great statue on display of Kamatsots in all his disturbing glory, a huge man-bat hybrid whose name translates to death bat. In Maya mythology, Kamatsots is an anthropomorphized bat. For the ancient Zapotec tribes of Oaxaca 2,000 years ago, bats represented the darkness, the ultimate death, and sacrifice. This was almost certainly because bats would have been found deep in the depths of spooky caves and at the bottoms of sinkholes. Both caves and sinkholes, or cenotes, were seen as portals to the underworld back then. 
It would have been an almost religious experience to see the bats swarm out of the gates of hell every single night and then go on to drink the blood of other animals. From this strange phenomenon, Kamatsots was born. It's unclear exactly what Kamatsots' purpose was other than lording over darkness and the nighttime. He is usually seen in Maya artwork as holding a sacrificial blade in one hand and the pulsing heart of a sacrifice victim in the other. When it came to violence and death, the bat god was usually the one that the Mayans looked to for guidance. El Chupacabra El Chupacabra has been prowling the American Southwest and sucking blood from cows, sheep, and dogs for decades. At least that's if the stories are to be believed. The Chupacabra is a fearsome and dreadful thing, a creature about the size of a small bear, but far more dangerous. It loves to suck blood, has disgusting, protective, scaly skin, and there are spines sticking out from its back like a deadly porcupine mohawk. The origins of this strange creature can be traced back to 1995. That was the year a farmer in Puerto Rico complained about a bloodthirsty creature sucking the blood from his goats and chickens. Chupacabra in Spanish literally translates to goat sucker, which is how the creature got its name. Hundreds of farm animals turned up dead and completely drained of their blood, but nobody could figure out why. After word got out, farmers all the way from the United States to Argentina began complaining about similar deaths. Suddenly, farm animals all over the world were turning up drained of their blood, and it was a complete mystery. All these years later, we still don't have an explanation. Benjamin Radford has studied the chupacabra his entire life, searching for the beast from North America to South America. He's interviewed people who have given him bizarre descriptions, and he's even gone hunting for the beast himself. Sadly, he's never even so much as gotten a glimpse of it. The Bonacon in medieval Europe, bestiaries were all the rage. These were manuscripts filled with strange and curious images of animals, both real and imagined. Seeing as medieval Europeans didn't exactly have access to National Geographic, many people had a hard time differentiating reality from fiction. After all, to someone who's never seen an elephant or a unicorn, who's to say which one seems more outrageous? A horse with a horn or a gigantic gray beast with tusks and a big floppy trunk? Many of the mythical animals were depicted in these old manuscripts. One of these utterly strange creatures has been all but forgotten, and it's called the Bonacon. The Bonacon is shown in medieval texts as looking like a bull, but with a mane like a horse and horns like a goat. Its main feature was that it could blast dung from its behind. It could expel feces like the possessed girl in The Exorcist expels vomit. Also, its dung was like lava and burned anything it touched. It was essentially a bull that could shoot molten feces at unsuspecting hunters. Goblins Everyone has probably heard of goblins, but not many people know where they come from. And like a lot of the most famous creatures still around in popular culture today, there are a lot of different versions of goblins. The creepy green goblins that are usually depicted today came from Germanic and British folklore. They were believed to be small malevolent creatures that dwelled in dark places and caused trouble. They were typically green, preferred to lurk in caves, and almost always terrorized children in particular. No matter which part of the world we look at, goblins are tricksters. They almost exclusively preyed on innocent kids who wandered into places they weren't supposed to. In Zimbabwe, people used to believe that if a child was born with a disability, it was because a goblin called Vigwambo impregnated that child's mother while she was asleep. In Japan, the Tengu creature was a sort of goblin that lived in the mountains, had a long nose, the claws and wings of a bird, and the body of a man. These Japanese goblins would start fires and kidnap children so they could eat them. Around the world, goblins were grotesque beings that kept to the shadows, played tricks on people, and had a fierce appetite for devouring children. The Scottish Yeti in Scotland, there is a mythical creature called Amphir Lyeth Moor, also known as the Big Grey Man. This creature allegedly haunts the summit of Ben Macdui, the highest peak in the Cairngorms mountain range of Scotland. It's been witnessed multiple times, kind of like Bigfoot, although no tangible evidence of its existence has ever been found. There have only been some unusual footprints documented, some blurry photographs, and a lot of shaky eyewitness testimonies. What everyone agrees on is that the Big Grey Man is over 10 feet tall, has unusually dark skin, 
and it's impossible to find because it hides in the fog of the mountain. Most people who encounter this mysterious beast only ever hear the sound of its heavy footsteps crunching gravel as it stalks behind them, unseen in the mist. The first recorded encounter was in 1925 by a man named J. Norman Colley, who was a trusted member of the Royal Geographical Society. He claimed that he witnessed an unimaginable horror while hiking alone near the summit of Ben McDewey. Colley recorded the encounter in 1925, but it turned out that he actually saw the thing back in 1891. The memory of the event haunted him for so long that even though he didn't want to tell anyone, he finally broke down and let the story out. He claimed the monster followed him through the mist and that he heard the crunch of its footsteps behind him. Every time he stopped, so too did the monster. He finally grew so afraid and was so terrified by the vague shadow of the thing following him from a distance that he ran all the way off the mountain and never returned again. Thanks for watching. What's your favorite mythical creature? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. See you soon. Bye.